My name is Stephanie McGee with MDRG, and I will be taking you through our research study segmenting the Millennial Traveler. After this presentation, you will have a full understanding of our proposed methodology and what you will get out of the research. Tons of studies have been done on the Millennial Traveler. We know they are important, and we know that they are different from Gen X and Baby Boomers. The importance of millennials has been ingrained in us, and as far as travel goes, tons of studies have validated their importance. So just to remind ourselves how critical this generation is, let's look at the facts. Millennial families are going to spend more and travel more than all other generational segments. And they're the only generation planning to spend more on travel in 18 than in 2017. And with all that in mind, they are the primary drivers of growth and travel. But, there are different kinds of millennials. We've heard how important experiences are to millennials, but what do those experiences look like? Well, they're different depending on which millennial you're speaking to. For a millennial like myself, on the edge of Gen X, my travel experiences surround my family and the types of experiences I can give to my children. But my best friend, who is single, with disposable income, she would go to the same place and have a radically different experience. <clears throat> So too can be said about the 23 year old that takes the same trip. And guess what? We are all lumped together as millennials. So the goal of this research is to understand those different groups or segments that exist within the category of millennial. With this research, we're going to avoid generalizing the millennial and seek to uncover the segments within the segment based on their approach to life and travel habits, not age or general demographics. We're going to use our whole mind approach to do this and to understand the whole picture of millennial motivations and behaviors in regards to travel. So as I just mentioned, we will be leveraging MDRG's whole mind approach for this research. We believe that whenever possible, research should seek to understand consumer behaviors and attitudes through both system one and system two decision-making processes. With system two here on the left, we look at the conscious brain those consumer responses that go through the natural filter of language. With system one, we seek to leverage methodologies that uncover the feelings and emotions beneath the surface. Those that are so inherent, they're difficult to put into words. Collecting data for consumers using methodologies that represent both the rational, thought-provoked responses, as well as the visceral, innate responses, is what will really lead us to true understanding about this generation and the types of consumers within it. So here are a few details. System two, the conscious mind. We'll leverage an online survey here to uncover the conscious approach to travel. In this portion of the survey, it's a little bit as you'd expect, we'll capture demographics, personality traits, travel frequency and spend, and the types of activities enjoyed on vacation. What this will do is start our segmentation process. It'll reveal segments um, and, and, and examples here are like an adventurer or sophisticate so what we may see is that a large group of millennials over index on traveling for adventure and outdoor activities. We put this group into a segment like you see here in the top right for adventurers. So we leverage, leverage the conscious aspects of the online so survey to carve out the framework for segments. And again, these are illustrative. We don't know what the segments are gonna be yet. So we'll also have a portion of the survey that takes the respondents through an online metaphor elicitation exercise, or OMET, as you may hear me refer to in the future. And I will go through the details of that methodology in a few slides, but the overall goal of this section of the survey is really to bypass the language filter and get to their true motivations for travel and approach to life. We'll also uncover personality traits and travel preferences, but rather than getting a response like, I like to hike, which we might get in our conscious section, we might understand better what hiking means to them. So perhaps they're seeking exploration or an escape from their daily life. These are the types of responses and insights that we can get using OMET. And this slide is an example of some OMET findings. You see a cluster of pictures that represents a particular segment as an example. <clears throat> and you also see that you might uncover some themes for travel for your segments, like rejuvenation or reflection or how their travel habits fit into their goals and desires for life of gaining understanding. So let me tell you a little bit more about OMET 
and why it's a great methodology for uncovering these types of themes. So what about metaphor is so important? Well, metaphors are the key to human expression. And there are statistics that say that for each minute of speech, we speak a half a dozen metaphors. An example could be, I slept like a log. I could say, oh, I slept great, but that doesn't really give you a sense of the true nature. But if I said I slept like a log, you understand that immovable, dead, heavy sleep. Or I slept like the dead. That's another metaphor right there, explaining one metaphor with another. Another example is money. It can be difficult to articulate the state of finances using just figures. If you're having a conversation, you would use words like cash flow or frozen assets, all in order to communicate the state of your affairs. In general, the state of liquid is a standard and common metaphor for the state of your finances. And the reason that we do this is because it allows us to understand a very complicated concept that you can't put into words without the use of metaphor. So in classic research, you might ask questions like, how much money comes in, how much goes out, how many credit cards do you have, how much is owed, all to understand the state of respondents' finances. And that data is crucial to understanding the consumer's financial situation. But it doesn't get to how that situation makes them feel. Now, if they had an opportunity to answer with a picture that represents their financial situation, they might use an image like this. And they might articulate that they are constantly struggling to keep their head above water. A much more emotive and um, relatable example that gets to the sense of how their financial situation really affects them. So looking at a case study that's similar to the study that we're proposing and shows the methodology at work, we recently did a really similar segmentation study on a smaller scale for an island destination. They wanted us to create segments to aid in developing their next marketing campaign. So the ask was to build segments and personas of the target traveler and recommendations for the communication strategy. We did so using the same methodology I outlined, a traditional survey with some OMET worked in. Now a little bit more detail about how OMET actually works in the context of a survey. We have a database of about 500 images that's filtered to make sure that there's no literal um, representation of the subject at hand. And respondents are asked to answer questions using images, not words. Metaphor really forces respondents to access deeper subconscious attitudes. So again, they're bypassing that language filter to tap into visceral emotions first. Now, once they've selected an image, we ask them to describe it. So as you see here in step two, this person describes this image as a red convertible cruising down the road with the top down. There is a ribbon of highway. Somebody else might describe this as driving on the coast. <clears throat> the interpretation of this image is the red convertible represents carefree and exciting freedom from everyday chores. So not only do they select the image, but then they give you two additional data points of the description of the picture, because not everybody sees the same thing, and then their interpretation of that picture. So back to the island destination. The analysis of the survey data identified three segments. The relaxed segment was seeking rejuvenation and relaxation out of vacation. Immersives wanted to experience the island and all of its culture. <clears throat> and the enthusiastics actually in over index on everything. So combining this data and insights collected from the conscious and non-conscious methodologies, we can really bring these personas to life. In this example, the enthusiast, you see the cluster graph in the middle showing how, the, how they over-index on everything. The conscious metrics give us information about islands they visited and if they plan to visit our destination. Also, frequency of travel, demographics, etc. But then you start to understand their goals and motivations. Travel is a means to diverse and new experiences. More spontaneous while on vacation. They embrace opportunities as they come. And they are overall identification with work hard, play hard, and un as well as underlying archetypes that the enthusiastic would identify, like the creator, hero, and magician. <clears throat> At the end of the day, what you really get is a deeper understanding of each segment's approach to travel. 
For our enthusiastics, travel is our doorway to new experiences. So how does this research play out at the end of the day? This particular client was able to create commercials that spoke to each of the segments. Rather than creating a commercial for the family traveler and the older traveler and the single traveler, they really created spots <clears throat> that focused on the true benefits their consumer seeks out of their travel experiences. Whether it's relaxation, rejuvenation, or immersing in culture, they were able to pull out those aspects of their island and highlight them for each commercial. And it's through that true understanding of the conscious and non-conscious motivations of consumers that we can get to deeper insights from which our communication strategies can be created. So thank you for your time and we look forward to working with you and get, getting started diving deep into the millennial generation and all of the different segments that fall within it.